What's up, everybody? You're listening to Conspiracy Theories and Unpopular Culture. I'm your host, Isaac Wazop. Today, we are starting a new monthly tradition. I'm saying this, and I hope I follow through with it. I follow through with almost every promise I make, okay? I got a pretty good batting average of uh, not, not predictions, but of uh, holding true to the things I tell you I'm going to do. Sometimes it takes me a while. But today, I'm going to start something that I think is going to be fun. I call it the monthly microdose. Yes. Every month, starting new this year, 2022, I'm going to do a monthly microdose. And what it's going to be is a show where we recap and revisit some of the ideas of the shows that I did in the month. Okay? With a couple of updates, because here's what I found out. I'm trying to do something different, right? I'm trying to be more interactive uh, because you guys and girls, men, women, non-binaries, everyone, everyone out there, Starseed Aliens, Kanye West, you listen to the show, you have an effect on the show. When you look at the ideas of quantum physics and quantum entanglement or even the laws of regular old physics, every body of mass exerts a gravitational force upon another that is you so therefore when i'm talking to people in the comments or reading the comments i don't i'm very quiet i'm very uh voyeuristic in the background but i read all the comments okay i read most of the messages i'd say damn near every comment that's across instagram twitter not facebook i don't i don't fuck with facebook um my Patreon, of course, Most, mostly of the Rockfin comments. I read them all. Uh, you may not know it, but I'm doing it, right? So in a way, this is a way of me revisiting some of the ideas that have risen to the top of the, I don't know, comment ether sphere. All right. And I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce a couple of new ideas. So there's kind of be there's gonna be some new content intermixed with me revisiting the month's content, along with some personal stuff of whatever I've been doing this month. Some artwork I've been consuming, film, television, music, movies, film and movies, same thing. And then I'm gonna talk about projects coming in the future. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a good time. So join me for the January monthly microdose. We're going to talk about this, uh, I mean, briefly, right? It's called the microdose because it's micro. In fact, I'm shocked no one came up with this name. I was trying to think of a cool name for this show. I was going to call it like the monthly recap show, but that didn't really hit the vibe of what it is. And I, it hit me, I thought, the monthly microdose. So I Googled it. I didn't see anyone with it, so we're running with it. <laughs> um <laughs> Of course, not condoning or endorsing any sort of illicit drug use. We're going to talk about Joe Rogan with Neil Young. We're going to talk about Kanye West, Donda 2, a a truth bomb dropping at the end of the show when we talk about that. And then we're going to hit this argument about Kali being a demon or a goddess. A lot of you got real mad about this. But we're going to hit all that. Uh, Without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, First and foremost... Jim Nichols, rest in peace, my man. I can't believe it. My man Jim Nichols died. I don't know what age he was. Um, you know, he was an older guy. He was, he was like uh, maybe boomer age, right? I should have got that for you. That's disrespectful of me. Um, my bad. Anyways, uh, I got a little background on Jim Nichols because you might be thinking, well, who's Jim Nichols? He is, first and foremost, he's a fellow vet drafted to Vietnam He's an artist who did a lot of paintings, and these paintings featured UFO graphics. Seen on the TV show UFO Hunters, he produced a ton of these UFO TV documentaries that you could see on Amazon. I personally got to know him in an entertainment sort of fashion when, back in 2016, Jim Nichols and Groovy Bean, we did a show together, right? And I'll put the link in the show notes. And in that show, we talked about ancient Egyptian occult beliefs, the Eye of Horus, the Nazis, the Theosophists. 
uh, Kubrick's code, channeling spirits, all the stuff that you know we always talk about, right? Uh, and ironically, back in those days, we were talking about you know the child abuse stuff, hijacking energy, initiations, Rihanna. We talked about Rihanna with her anti album, the initiation album there, mind control breakdowns, and Aleister Crowley. And after the show was over, we stayed online, we chatted a little bit. I hit Jim up a few weeks later because I wanted to buy some of his UFO art. I said, bro, I need some UFO art on my wall. And, you know, shout out Phil Goodrich. Got me the UFO painting behind me. Uh, but he said he was, he didn't have anything available. And I sort of kept in, I kept following Jim, right? Watching his cool UFO TV docs. Um, two I would recommend. There's one, they're both on Amazon, at least as of this recording. One called Aeon of Horus where he goes through Crowley and his connections with all kinds of stuff. And there's one called UFOs and the Occult Extraterrestrial War. It's really good. Uh, he made really cool docs, right? Um, and you can check out, and I'll put a link to his website where you can check out all of his essays that he wrote, uh, links to all of his videos. It's Jim Nichols, UFO Um, and there's actually a little interesting bit of truth or drama to be found on here. Truth or drama, right? Uh, Corey Good, who's a very famous UFO contactee, and he he claims that he speaks with these blue avian flavor of alien, right? Uh, he's got some very strange origins and uh, sources of support, right? Um, in fact, cause, and it seems that Jim Nichols and he, I don't know, maybe were at odds about this on, on some levels. Uh. And Corey Good was working with David Wilcox, and if you know how these truthers are, David Wilcox was a big Q guy back in a couple of years ago, who and he was pushing that hardcore. The whole their storms come in, they're arresting all the, you know, Madonna and Oprah are all getting arrested right now, and they're shutting the world down and black the twenty one days of blackout or whatever it was. Anyway, um. But it was interesting. What's interesting about Corey Good is the idea that the blue avians are manifested through ritual magic, right? Which fits right in line with all the ideas I've been talking about with aliens and magic and all that stuff. Anyhow, Jim associates these blue avians, which are they called blue avians because they're like half bird, half alien, right? To Horus, which is you know, from Aleister Crowley's Aeon of Horus, the bird-headed Egyptian god, Horus. Uh, in fact, he's got an image on his website of Corey Good's drawing of the blue avians. And he's, uh, the blue avian alien is holding two fingers up, just like the Baphomet, who Crowley said he was the Baphomet, right? Uh, anyway, he's got links to all of his videos uh, t- towards uh, Amazon on his website, and you can read the, the videos in the text form, the essay form with the photos and stuff on his website too. So rest in peace, Jim Nichols and all the people who knew him and, and loved him and friends and family and all that stuff. Uh, I, I didn't see a lot of people talking about this and uh, I wanted to bring awareness to it. Uh, again, you can check out his website. I'll put the link in the show notes. It's jimnicholsufoartist.com. Now, uh, moving along, some things I was working on this month. I went and did an appearance on Conspiracy Kyle's show. Uh, we actually, he, he's the Star Wars guy, right? Big Star Wars conspiracy nerd, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, ironically, we talked about a lot of things besides Star Wars. We, we hit Star Wars and the Matrix a little bit. Um, but yeah, check that interview out. Check him out. He started podcasting only recently in 2020. So he's pretty new. Uh, but show him some love because, especially if you're into Star Wars, he's he just wrote his first book, um, and I love it, man. Get a homeboy, get get on it, dude. He's like really fired up, red pill status. You know what I mean? And uh, he's got you, you can get it on Apple. I'll put the link in the show notes. You get on he's on Rockfin, right? If you're on the Rockfin, check that out. He's got a video version, and he's got a YouTube even, so you can watch it for free. Um, my hair looks crazy in it, by the way. My hair looks crazy most of the time. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, some other things I was working on. I got COVID. <laughs> I got Omicroned. Can you believe it? 
Um, so that happened. Uh, also, I got a new laptop. I just got to take the time to set it up with the idea that now I can create the video version of this show, which, like, to be fair, the video version is essentially just me talking into the camera, but a lot of people like that. So I'm going to, hey, you know what? I aim to please. If that's what you'd like, let's do it. You know what I mean? This makes it maybe give it a more personal feel. And if you're like me, like I'm I'm holed up in my, my studio working all day and podcasting all night. And I play a lot of music. I play a lot of podcasts. And there's something nice about having the video and having this sort of feedback thing. I, I'm waving my hands all the time. I do this, right? Uh, so anyhow, I got the new laptop. Um, Neil Young, he lost the uh, in the in the octagon to Joe Rogan. <laughs> Have you seen this? Joe Rogan had Joe Rogan's been getting all the smoke because he's got climate change deniers and COVID anti vaxxer hoaxer type uh, people on there, which I support. Right? Like I don't agree with all of those things, but free speech, right? The problem is Joe Rogan is a very influential guy. He's got way bigger numbers and audiences than the mainstream news does. So the mainstream news is attacking him. Okay? Now, you could approach this a couple different ways. And I like to consider every theory. So I'll float a theory that I've never heard anyone talk about. And I don't believe this. Because I like Joe Rogan, right? Uh, Joe Rogan... Maybe he is the mainstream media, right? Maybe his narrative is the one we need to be more skeptical of. Just saying, you just we just got to be careful because here's the guy who's he's running it, man. Who's got more influence, Don Lemon or Joe Rogan right now? That's all I'm saying. Uh, Joe Rogan for sure has more influence in the sense that. You know, your Don Lemons and your, uh, I want to say Bill O'Reilly, who's Fox News' sweetheart at night. I don't know. Uh, what the hell these people's names? Ann Coulter? I don't know. No. A- Laura Ingram. She, I feel like everyone's been canceled. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like everyone's been canceled. Whoever that is, these people are talking to an audience that their mind has already been made up. They're sort of lost causes of being open-minded and understanding and changing their perspective and not to be ageist or whatever, but I would argue that most of the audience is an older generation watching the news. Cause look, I'm 42 and most of the people my age, definitely younger do not pay for cable. I'm like the last guy I know my age that pays for cable. And I do it because there's so many shows I got to watch. Because if I didn't have this sort of podcast book research thing going on, I wouldn't have it. I would just pay for the online stuff and Netflix every day or whatever, right? But Joe Rogan is a problem because he is influencing, shaping, and molding the minds of everyone from the age of what, like 15 to 40? These are the people that are going to be running the country here soon. And the powers that be need to make sure he's pushing a narrative that they can get behind. Now, is he compromised? I clearly don't know. I don't think so. Uh, A lot of people... but, But what I'm saying is... I approach everyone with a skeptical sort of view. Uh, Joe Rogan is, I don't think he's as right wing as people have been telling me he is. Clearly he's got some right wing tendencies now, but if you listen to his shows and I don't listen to all of them, but I've heard him say many things that aren't right wing at all. He has right wing guests on, but he also had Sanjay Gupta on. So, I mean, I don't know what, you know, the news wants to, they want to die on this hill of. Let's have these 10-minute fighting soundbite matches where no one learns anything. They're just riling you up. And here comes Joe Rogan. He's like, no, we're going to have a three-hour conversation. And you're going to elaborate on these points. Why is that a bad thing? It's a bad thing because it's very persuasive and it's truly the only way to go forward. 
Now, some of his guests are sketchy, right? Like Robert Malone. I've read a lot of shady things about that guy. I mean, clearly his guests have like an anti-vax stance as of late. But hey, man. This is right. He's allowed to talk to whoever he wants to talk to. And I think he actually does a decent... I mean, he could do better, right? He could do better to have both perspectives represented. But then again, the Provax stance is clearly represented everywhere else. You know what? And this is the same argument that uh, when I was stationed in uh, South Korea, uh, I was hanging out with a lot of black dudes, right? And the <laughs> they called me the little white boy. And uh, it should have been my rapper name. I should have went with that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we would talk about race sometimes. Um, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm born and raised a, a white dude predominantly hanging out with white suburban other w- white dudes, right? Very obsessed with black culture, though, right? I love hip-hop. But the, the, the argument we had one time was... We were talking about, and this is a, an old argument people used to have about race, where white people would get upset and be like, you know, if there was a channel on TV called White Entertainment, because there's BET, right, which is like Black Entertainment Television, I think, which I used to watch, right? I used to watch, uh, what was it called, 106 at Park or something with that AJ guy. Anyway, uh, back when I used to play more music videos. And we had this discussion about magazines. And I said, well, yeah, don't you think if there was a white only magazine, white entertainment or white entertainment television channel, wouldn't, wouldn't you guys be upset? That sounds kind of racist. So why is it okay for you to have a black entertainment television? And he, he said, I'll, I'll never forget it. He was like, it's like, he's like, yeah, you've, you've got white entertainment television. It's every other channel that exists. You know what I mean? And uh, and that stuck with me, and I was like, no, that touche, touche. Um, anyway, why are we talking about this? Joe Rogan. Oh, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, the Joe Rogan. So he he has predominantly anti-vaxxers on, and a lot of people oh they have more pro-vaxxers. Well, he had Sanjay Gupta on for one, and for two, that viewpoint is clearly already out there. All right. Anyway. Oh, also. I tweeted about this. Do you remember the the 270 doctors that were saying that they need to shut Joe Rogan down? Turns out they weren't all medical doctors. They were just PhDs, right? And the one guy, his name was Cole Creighton. And I looked, and because like people on Twitter were roasting this guy like, oh, really? This guy who, he's not a real medical doctor. He's like a, I don't know, liberal arts PhD or something like that. And I checked out his profile, and I was like, oh, that is weird. Because he's super, if I recall, he was like super like liberal, right? So I looked up the list, because a lot of times they dupe us truthers, and they'll get all the truthers fired up about something that's not true. And I've exposed this in the past on on Twitter and Instagram uh, with the, what the hell was it? It was some <laughs> Professor Ann, comma, lesby, and it's, it's a satirical account but it's not clearly satirical professor lesbian and and this fake sort of account was promoting all these extreme left-wing ideas and me being a pretty liberal dude i say look this is not this is some other shit this is some psyop shit and sure enough it was professor lesbian come on anyway um i look up the list of 270 doctors this cole creighton was not on there and i was getting ready to call out be like hey like you guys are getting upset. This guy's not even on the list, okay? I tagged him even. No response. And it turns out he was apparently removed from the list, making it 269 doctors, which is really weird. And I'm just saying all this to say to say that there's some weird psyops going on right now. I don't know what the answer is. But... There's crazy doctors out there too, right? There's a million doctors in America. Those are medical doctors. There's a million of them. A million of them. So you get a couple of quacks out there. And it sounds real good because you're like, well, this guy's a doctor. I mean, there's a lot of doctors. Anyway, 
Um, moving on. Oh, uh, those conspiracy guys did a show on Project Bluebeam. They mentioned your boy at about one hour in. So shout out Gordo. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of old rock albums. You know, because why not? Here's some good ones that I want to pass along. If you're like me and you just sit here and listen to music all day long and uh, <laughs> or you run out of, you don't want to listen to podcasts anymore. Black Sabbath's Master of Reality, Alice Cooper's Trash, Motorhead Ace of Spades, Sound Scientist, that's uh, Paranoid America, it has this like group he put together, or not group, it's, it's like beats and stuff. Now here's a cool one he sent along to me, Mephistopheles, spelled real crazy, right? But they have this, it sounds like old classic rock, but apparently it's fair, relatively new. They have this album called Satan Sex Ceremonies, and they claim to have recorded it in Dracula's actual castle in Romania. And it kind of sounds like it. It's, it's very cool if you're into that sort of vibe. It's like hammer horror, 70s classic rock vibe. Not that I condone all this satanic stuff, because, you know, I'm trying to be a good Christian warrior. And to prove it, I balanced it out, because guess what I played after that? I played... Creed's greatest hits, yes. And before you laugh, um, you know, because I, I literally thought this. I thought, you know, I'm getting pulled into this satanic filth. I got to counterbalance this with positive light, right? And uh, I put, I, I thought, let me put on Creed. And let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to call it the Creed Challenge. I want you to take the Creed Challenge. You put on the Creed's Greatest Hits album, and you tell me you don't enjoy any of it. You know, I know it's like it's like Nickelback, right? It's like a band that's just so easy to make fun of. And I kind of thought that going into it. But I was like, dude, these songs really were good, man. And, and look, I don't like gospel music myself. Christian rock, I think it's silly. But... To be honest, I don't know who would have done it better. I don't know who would have done it better. I thought it was really well done. Uh, so take that Creed challenge. You listen to the greatest hits and you tell me you don't love it. I changed my mind on Creed. And I hadn't listened to them in like 20 years. In fact, I remember very vividly in 1998, I was a mechanic at Honda. And my homeboy Rory, he had a Ford Mustang convertible. I believe it was automatic too because I feel like I clowned him for that. And we would drive around and I remember him blasting Creed. And it was really cool. I promise you in 98 it was really cool. Okay. But the music holds up. So shout out to Creed. Oh, and supposedly Creed is... They're the, you know, the uh, there's a show in Vegas coming up called When We Were Young or something like that. It's a bunch of emo bands. And in the details and the fine print, it says that Creed is allowed to show up and play because they own the, I guess, stadium or something like that. I don't know. That might be some TikTok BS. That's where I saw it. But the guy went to the website. It seemed real, seemed legit. Let's talk about some entertainment. I've been watching Free Guy. I watched that. So you know a, a podcast is coming soon. I watched The Lamb. Super disappointed, as you read on my Twitter and Instagram. I was so excited. The first time I saw that trailer a long time ago, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And it was terrible. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't even recommend watching it if it was free. It's probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my whole life. In fact, but it is very good to fall asleep to, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, now that I fell asleep, my first watch, I, I watched it the whole way through, straight through. But then I remember thinking, man, that was really slow at the beginning. I, I went to fall asleep the one night, so I played it. And there's a part where you hear like a bell ringing from a a goat or a lamb or something like that. And I forgot it was on. I woke up from my sleep. And I was like, I just heard a bell. I know I heard it. And I, I was walking around the house. I thought someone broke in. And it took me a minute. I was like, oh, jeez. It's playing the dumb lamb movie. So it did scare me eventually, just not in the way it intended. Outer Banks on Netflix, watched uh, two seasons of that with Josie while we were quarantined for, for the COVID. 
I don't recommend it. I'm not proud of watching it. But uh, I couldn't turn it off, so there's that. An old movie with, uh, what's his name? Not Christopher Lee. Vincent Price called House of Usher. I watched that. That was pretty good. That's the one that features the artwork of Bert Schoenberg. Is that who it was? I did a bonus show in December with uh, this old artist that used to hang out with Marjorie Cameron. We're watching Too Hot to Handle on Netflix right now. Not proud of it. I watched Witchfinder General on Shudder. Shudder's got a ton of folk horror right now. If you're into folk horror like Wicker Man or Blood on Satan's Claw, hit up Shudder. In fact, I tried to secure them as a sponsor twice, and they won't come through. And I'm like, bro, like, okay, you don't know what you're missing here. I shout them out all the time. Might as well get some bread for it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's some shows I'm I'm in the middle of. Archive 81. Everyone's asking for a, sh- a podcast on that. We'll see. I'm on episode three. I'm probably going to do a show on it. It's pretty good so far. There's a movie called Filth that my man in Bonnie Scotland wants me to watch. Uh, I don't do every request, first off. So don't get too heartbroken if you send me a request. I, got, I get probably 100 requests a month, right? Someone on Twitter or somewhere said, why don't you watch the whole Days of Our Lives series? Bro, I ain't watching the 5,000 hours of soaps to do a... No, this is actually a great idea. Uh, I, I say that. I'm not mocking. Uh, but I'm clearly not going to watch anything that long. But that's a great idea. I bet there is a lot of cool stuff in there. Wasn't there like a guy with an eye patch or something? I remember seeing that on the TV in the 80s. Anyway, uh, anyways, there's a movie called Filth. I'm going to watch that, I think. Uh, Tita- Titan? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. That looks cool. Uh, there's, this, there's a movie called Big Town I'm going to watch. It's about it's, It was in the 80s, and it's about a guy who plays craps, which I love craps. That's my game. And uh, Diane Lane is in it. It's got like some affair-type stuff. Looks real saucy. And then I want to watch Yellow Jackets on Showtime. Now, uh, this month, here's the shows we did. Man, we're already at 30 minutes. So much for a micro dose, huh? Does it turn into a regular show? Next month, we're going faster. The shows we did in January, the 2021 wrap-up show with my predictions for the year, which Russia invading Ukraine was not on the list, sad to say. Uh, we did Matrix Revolutions. We did Matrix Resurrections, uh, which was Dog shit. <laughs> I, I, I was actually sent a pretty interesting video clip from uh, somebody on Patreon of an interview with Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss where they talk about the metaverse. And he basically says he wishes Zuckerberg wasn't the guy making it. So shout out Keanu Reeves, right? And uh, he even elaborates about the idea of doing porn in virtual reality, right? Which is what I said on Robert Phoenix's show forever ago. That's how they're going to get us. They know what they know how we think. We're simple creatures. Uh, one idea that I thought was interesting from that interview he floated was that a young person was asking him about the Matrix. Like, what's the Matrix about? And he told this young lady, like, well, it's questioning what's how do we know what's real? Well, a very philosophical idea as I talked about for hours and hours the last month, right? And her response was, who cares if it's not real? Drop the mic. Call me appalled. But that's, man, that's what these young folks are, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? These young folks, they're going to be running stuff. When it's time to put grandma and grandpa in the nursing home, they're going to be like, uh-uh, let's put them in the metaverse. Just strap some goggles on their head and put them in the janitor's closet. And plug them into the extension cord. That's what's going to happen. Now, what else did I do? <laughs> uh, don't look up with my man, Leo DiCaprio. You know, I loved it. Everyone got mad at me because I said I liked the movie. Because climate change is the new darling topic of conspiracy. We have to not believe in in climate change, apparently. 
Uh, in fact, Joe Rogan had Jordan Peterson on, and they were denying climate change, apparently. I didn't listen to the whole show. You know how the news likes to take clips out of context, so I saw the 30-second clip where Jordan Peterson, who's like a, what is he, like a professor of psychology or some shit, he's all, well, what's the, what is the model? I don't know, that's my Klaus Schwab voice. I only have like two voices. I got a Nick Cage and a Klaus Schwab. But Peterson was like, how do you, he, he was, he did sound like an idiot because I've got a science background. I've did a whole class on modeling and simulation. And he's like, how do you even model climate? Climate is everything. You can't model everything. Or no, he was mad because they didn't model everything. He's like, well, who decides what variables go into the model? And it's like, to defend the climate change uh, professors or whatever, there's, there's entire fields of study to this. They're looking at the metrics that show what the climate is doing, right? And again... Big topic, I've thought for the last 20 years climate change is a real problem, and I'm currently in that stance, but let me take a better, closer look at it because I don't trust these nerds either. I don't trust them either, and this is the problem. And Carl Sagan said this. He said this was going to be the problem of the future when you have to rely on experts because not everyone – look – Jordan Peterson doesn't know enough about climate change. I don't know enough about climate change. Joe Rogan doesn't know enough about climate change. You got to go to the experts. But what if those experts are compromised? Which clearly that happens. It's always been my beef with science. MGK, Megan Fox. Somehow the most controversial show I've done in a while. Don't ask me why. It's because... I said Kali was a demon, and I got all the smoke, all the smoke. Look, folks, I don't know the ins and outs and nuances of Hindu religions. I just know what I read, okay? And I'm going to read to you some supporting ideas of why Kali is a demon. Now, apparently Kali is a demon and a goddess, and there's two different sort of entities for this. But people condemned me very quickly saying how wrong I was and how stupid I was and how naive I was and, and I don't know, sexist, and the list goes on and on and on, right? So let's talk about it. I have this book called The Dark Lord by Peter Lavenda, a guy who's about the most well-versed into the occult as anyone could ever know. And this is directly from his book. He's talking about the Kali Yuga, the final age, which is what I talked about on the MGK Megan Fox show. This is what he says. This is a period of hundreds of thousands of years, which is said to have begun in the year 3102 BC. It is the last of four yugas or ages, the Satya Yuga, Divapara Yuga, Treta Yuga, and Kali Yuga. The Kali Yuga is ruled by the demon Kali, not Kali the goddess, a symbol of strife and conflict, a fearsome creature sometimes depicted carrying a huge sword or other weapon. Okay. So take it up with Peter Lavenda. That's that's a dude that's way smarter than me. I'm just a dummy over here telling you what I'm reading. And then in his, in his glossary, he even defines the two. Kali, the demon, is the sword-wielding demon of the Kali Yuga, our present age, and sworn enemy of the Kalki Avatar, the tenth and last avatar, according to some Indian and Tibetan traditions who will come out of Shambhala to cleanse the world. Then you've got the next entry is Kali Goddess, the black goddess of the Indian pantheon and symbol par excellence of Shakti, the divine power, not to be confused with the demon Kali. I will humbly accept your apologies, my haters. No, I joke. Um... One of the people uh, we have some good conversations with. You know who you are. Come on, come back around. We can, we can all, we can all get along. Is all I'm trying to say. Uh, I've got more references, but it, it that was about the most. Cla- if you read about Kali and Lords of the Left Hand Path, they talk about Julius Evola, which is who we talked about in, with Professor Ben Tietelbaum when we talked about Steve Bannon and his occult sort of Kali Yuga ushering in stuff. Uh, Julius Evola was one of his 
I don't know, influences, I guess. And uh, it talks about the left-hand path with Kali and so on. Anyway. Uh, Brittany Murphy. Depending on when you're listening to this show, you might have heard part two. Part one, we talked about how the HBO Max documentary, I believe, misportrayed her death. Uh, but they did point out how shady her husband Simon was. And in part one, we also talked about how she just so happened to live in a haunted house that Britney Spears said a bunch of portals and demons were coming through and stuff, right? And then in part two, which you may or may not have heard, they um, we'll talk about the whistleblower from the Department of Homeland Security and how I, I proved to you how Brittany Murphy was linked into this person, which very difficult to find. So please listen to that show because that was a lot of research for something that should be a pretty simple upfront thing. Uh, I also did, a, we did a bonus show, right? If you're a supporter, supporters get a bonus show every month. This month you got Kanye West and Julia Fox and a ton of you, a ton of you signed up for my, either my Patreon, my Rockfin or my VIP section. I believe based on the strength of this one show, which kind of blew my mind. I had no idea it was going to be that popular. Uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on both of these illuminate confirm celebs. Uh, cause apparently you guys are really interested in this as am I, of course. And that show was amazing <laughs> to be fair. That was an amazing find, uh, Julia Fox. I basically connect her with Marina Abramovich and all these occultists who dabble with playing with blood and how the power of blood sacrifice fits into all these occult ideas. Very interesting. It was it was mind blowing uh, to see how Kanye West. I postulated that Kanye West was going to be going down the dark path. He's going to switch gears. Let's talk about some show and and we're and let's talk about the shows. This is some shows that are coming up. Then we're going to wrap it up. Free Guy, the movie. Watch that movie. It's a good movie. I liked it. I recommend it. I rented it for six bucks on Amazon. Well worth it. Uh, would I recommend to buy it? I don't know. I watched it twice, and I thought it had. I thought it was good, both times. So I don't know. Maybe if you're really, if you're really into Ryan Reynolds, I guess. Uh, but I'm going to talk about all of its Gnostic symbolism that's in this movie. There's a ton. It's the whole Gnostic creation myth. And uh, speaking of symbolism. My other show, I do a show called Breaking Social Norms with my wife, Josie Weisop. You love you love it or you hate it. That's all I know about it. And uh, we did two episodes in January on the basics of symbolism. So if you're new to the ideas of symbolism and you want to go to the foundations and you want to and you don't mind some ramblings between me and Josie, check out Breaking Social Norms because they're both up. Uh, now, Kanye and there's going to be more Kanye and Julia coming up. I know it. But Donda 2, the album none of us asked for. Because you, you heard my reviews, if you're on my socials. I thought Donda 1 was not, it was a very forgettable album. I thought that Drake's CLB album was actually much better. And I stand by that. But he's dropping Donda 2. And he's dropping it on February 22nd, which is 2.22 of 22. Sorry if you're watching the video. My nose is still running. Got COVID run through my veins. And um, on his Instagram story, he promoted it, saying that this is about Pluto's return. Now, I looked it up because I'm not an astrology guy. But first off, Future, his first album was called Pluto, by the way. And then he had a mixtape called Pluto something or the other. I think it might have been called Pluto's Return even, actually. But I looked it up. I thought, okay, astrologically, what does this mean? Because I don't really buy into astrology too hard. But I'm starting to wonder if it doesn't have a lot of truth. Uh, this is what I read on, I believe it's Bustle. Anyway. It says, nothing says a cosmic rebirth like enigmatic Pluto, the power-hungry dwarf planet that symbolizes transformation and renewal. According to the stars, 
The United States is finally getting a spiritual makeover with its first ever Pluto return on February 22nd, 2022. The first ever in America, okay? It says, astrologically, a Pluto return is when the heavenly body returns to the same position in a birth chart where it was when the chart began. It happens around every 248 years, uh, meaning this is the Pluto return, the first Pluto return since 1776. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Pluto rules death and rebirth, influencing the end and beginning of new karmic cycles. It also rules things like interpersonal skills, power struggles, and shows the source of your personal power. This planet is the portal through which your spiritual and shadow energy is transformed and released into the exterior world. Astrologer Lauren Ash tells Bustle. So... All this occult stuff we've been talking about with Kanye West. It's going to come to a head with this Pluto 2 album. Mark my words. Mark them. He's been showing us how he's wearing the mask, right? And the mask is this initiation symbol of transformation, of rebirth. So Pluto rules death and rebirth. And it's the portal through which shadow energy is transferred and we talk about all these ideas so many times. I don't want to like tread over the same stuff if you've been listening to my show or you read my books. Read The Dark Path if you haven't. It's on Audible. I read it right for you. No excuses. Or you can get it for two bucks. I'll tell you about that at the end of the show. But Pluto is the shadow self planet. So all these assumptions I've been making about Kanye harnessing some dark satanic energies is going to be true. Uh, you know, you heard who he was hanging out with on that show I did, on that bonus show. Shady people. Shady Satanist people. So Kanye West is going to be having a full rebirth and his shadow energy is going to come through. Get ready for some dark stuff. Uh, we're also, What other shows am I working on? Let me wrap this up. 40 minutes, my God. So much for the micro dose. This is a macro dose. This is a hero dose. <laughs> the hero dose show. Uh, we're going to do a TMZ Nerds Illuminate Confirm show. Uh, the Super Bowl. Do you watch the trailer? They have the chessboard on the trailer. Freemasonic 101 is the chessboard. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to this. There's going to be some fire on this one. Uh, you know, Illuminati symbolism aside, we got Eminem, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige. This is going to be good for all these old losers like me. Uh, so maybe Jay-Z ain't all that bad. I think he's the guy arranging all the NFL halftime shows now. So this certainly beats the previous shows. I think the best one we've seen in the last 10 years is probably Prince. Everything else has just been trash. Ugh. Um, we're going to do a bonus show in February for supporters on The Animatrix. I gotta find a way to make that jazz it up a little bit because there's not a lot on there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to jazz it up for you. Then uh, some other shows that are way on the back burner, of course, Archive 81 if if it bears fruit. Uh, I'm gonna do a show on Jim Carrey, Juice World, Above Majestic, that documentary about that's got that's got your Corey Good and uh, the Avian Blue Alien guy, um, D- you know David Wilcox, they're on there with their Q stuff. Uh, that Spring Breakers film analysis, I, I promise you it's going to happen. Don't know when. Uh, Gravity Falls. I'm watching every Gravity Falls episode. I'm like two-thirds through. I just got to find, I just got to pick up the steam to do it some more. But yeah, lots going on this year so far. Uh, thanks for I told you earlier, you want to get the talk about the shadow. You want to get the dark path. You can get it for two bucks. Listen to the smoking deal. And this is, uh, this is probably the last time you're going to hear about it. Because after January 31st, I'm not talking about it anymore. I'm going to leave you alone. It's got to make sure you hear it if you haven't heard it. If you want to, I always talk about, I got the three supporter feeds, right? I got Patreon, Rockfin, and VIP section. Well, the VIP section is the one I run off of IlluminatiWatch.com. And uh, so many people signed up for my VIP offer of $2 a month for two months. For 22 i got my own pluto astrology numerology going on here 
So many people signed up so far that my host bumped up my package. Now I'm paying thirteen hundred a year instead of seven hundred a year. So, and that's a good problem, right? I'm not bitching. Uh, that's a great problem. So thank you for signing up, but don't think you're gonna stay at the two bucks forever. Okay, I gotta look, I gotta pay these bills, right? Gotta pay these bills. Uh, but you're gonna get two bucks a month for two full months, and then it goes up to five a month. That's for tier one. In tier one, you'll get the Dark Path and Kubrick's Code, the Kubrick's Code documentary, ad-free feed of the show. That's worth its weight in gold. No more ads ever. You'll get all the bonus episodes, over 100 and counting now, going way back to 2018. This is the only supporter feed that you'll get every show going back to 2014 when I first started, completely ad-free. Because I only started Patreon in like 2018 or 2017. I think 2017. So that's, you know, when, the, but that's when I started taking podcasts really seriously, by the way. And then Rockfin only started in 2020. Yeah, 2020, I think, or 2019. 2019. Uh, I threw a couple of the greatest hits on the Rockfin, but yeah, this is the only one where you can get every single one ad free, going all the way back to number one. Uh, but take advantage of my offer, two bucks, because I know once you're on, you're going to be like, okay, this is worth it. I just know it's like, it's such an ass pain. No, you're like, ah, I got to get my credit card out and come up with a password. Like, I get it. I get it. But I don't know if you saw my Instagram with my $5,000 laptop I had to buy. And now I got a 1300 hosting bill I got to pay. You want to support the show? That's how you could do it. Now, you, you, can, uh, you can check it out. And if you don't like it, just back off of it again. Totally fine. I'm the one running it. I'm not selling your email. I'm not scamming you. In fact, if you sign up for the two bucks and you're like, you can email me, say, Isaac, I hate this. I'll give you your money back. No questions asked. I don't care. I, I don't, I'm not trying to dupe you out of money, right? I want you happy. And go to IlluminatiWatcher.com, hit the VIP tab, go down, and you got to use the coupon code No More Losers. Now, I put photo guide walkthroughs on my Twitter. And on my Instagram, I believe it's on January 25th, with images of the screenshots if you have any problems, okay? You got to do it by January 31st because that's when this deal expires. And you're going to get that VIP section for two full months in a row, two bucks each month. And then it goes up to five. You can cancel anytime you want. You can get a refund anytime you want because I need you to be happy. But I know once you get in there, you're going to be stoked about it because it's a great deal to avoid all the ads. And if you and if it's not your thing and you're like, that's cool, I don't mind the ads, that's fine too. I appreciate you listening one way or another. Uh, this is just an opportunity where you can get my books for cheap and check it out and see what it's all about. So link will be in the show notes. Uh, but that was the January monthly microdose, the first episode of the microdose. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I ended up rambling a lot more than I thought I would. I thought this was going to be 20 to 30 minutes. Next month is going to be 20 to 30 minutes. I got to I gotta trim some fat off this. Uh, but yeah, we talked about all the things. Rest in peace, Jim Nichols. I'll put that link in the show notes. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Uh, stay tuned. Stay subscribed to the show because as you can tell, there's a lot more going on. So until next time, stay woke. Stay woke.